Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Rebel Galaxy. As you've seen in our previous uploads, we've been playing the game since it came out, and we really wanted to just go over the uh, general idea of the game, how it plays, and of course give you some starting out tips based on what we've experienced. So let's go ahead and do a new game here. We're going to skip through the cinematics and a lot of the dialogue, as we'll leave that for you to actually experience through your own playthroughs. Uh, what we have here is, first of course, you will spawn in your default ship here, the uh, Rasputin. The controls are very simple and straightforward. They are designed based on the fact that the game is also going to be ported to uh, Xbox or Xbox One, rather. So they are fairly low in controls, but at the same time, it doesn't actually take away from it. A lot of your keyboard shortcuts will work fine, like hitting M will pull up the map anytime instead of having to go through menus for it. And of course, as you can see on the HUD here, we have a list of all the different active abilities and inactive ones that you'll use primarily through it. Now, E key is going to be mostly what you use for pretty much any kind of interaction and also for Stop movement. Key. So, as we start out here, it has you dock and as this um, tip here says, you'll want to buy a secondary turret. Now, that is definitely strongly recommended. So go ahead and go into your equipment bay, go into weapons, go down to beta turret, and then go ahead and purchase a new scatter turret. Tell it to install it as well. This icon right here on the right hand side of the listing tells you that that turret type is equipped. So that way when you go back you'll see your list. Everything but a secondary and ordinance are full. And we'll get to that once we actually have the cash for it. Now we'll go ahead and go through the uh, initial start up here basically. Get all the <laughs> basic quests going. And give you an idea of how the combat and flight system works. So, you have these in-game tutorials that work perfectly fine. Engines Basically, E will increase your speed, as you can see in the top right, by one bracket, up to a total of four, and then Q will decrease it by one until you go to a complete stop. Now, above that is your afterburner, which, of course, you just hold down W, and it will engage your afterburner. And that will just recharge for you. Of course, once we get away from objects, uh, depending on your particular warp drive, or warp engine rather, it'll take a little bit longer to uh, charge up, but you'll hold down E and go into this warp space right here, which is pretty nice. Get you a look at the ship here. Everything is pretty much fairly well detailed. All the turrets move with wherever you're facing, unless of course they're firing on their own which we'll get into that in a few minutes here. I believe this one is basically just a cargo exchange for the very first mission, which easy was easy enough. Hey there. Or as you send you, you got my payment. I'll see go you into combat here. You, you see, our turrets are going to automatically start firing on it. Now, by default, we are equipped, or rather, we are selected on our broadside, which we hold down... That. So we'll hold this down and it'll charge our broadside. Once it's fully charged, then we want to fire. And that gives you the most accuracy for your shots there. Of course, we'll use the afterburner to uh, close with him again. Your weapons have their own independent range limitations. And every weapon fires independently. All the shots are rendered separately, basically. So, for example, if we were to fly by this asteroid up here on the right, our shots would end up hitting the asteroid rather than hitting the hostile ship. I don't think he's actually going to survive long enough for us to do that. Oh, here we go. Now, that comes in handy when you're fighting other ships, and especially when you're fighting a larger fleet. You can use a large capital ship basically to cover, and we'll switch to our turret so you can see. Even though we're targeting on him, they can see the asteroid. And they are destroyable by all weapons, so you can actually just blast those apart. As well as with the cargo, pretty much anything else you find floating around will get damaged by anything that hits it, including you ramming into it. So, you can use that as kind of a way to destroy terrain, or hide behind cover and use the uh, the shots from other ships as I was saying to crash into the enemy ship you're taking cover behind and that will actually damage them further. Now the disadvantage is since your turrets automatically fire on whatever they're locked on since they automatically fire what on whatever they're locked on to what that means is of course if you end up flying through and say that asteroid we flew past a minute ago was not an asteroid but a friendly ship and you're still shooting at the enemy 
you're of course going to end up hitting that asteroid, or the other ship rather in that case, and damaging it friendly, and that can, depending on the situation, end up causing them to turn hostile on you after taking so much damage. So it is um, a bit more complex that way than, your, than most games where you end up just with a automatically predetermined firing solution. Here we go, we have another ambush here. Now the small fighters and strike craft are actually a bit more of a threat than you find with the capital ships in my experience. And we'll zoom in on the turret here. The reason we want to select the turret rather than let it auto fire is because it will fire faster under your control than it will on its own. But the broadside will never auto fire, so you have to manually fire that. And of course you can use your broadside on small craft. And as long as you let it charge all the way up and you're within a decent range, you'll usually hit them. Now, holding down the uh, S key actually brings us to an emergency stop, basically, or reduced speed. And that's what we're doing here. As you see here on our bottom left-hand side, our starboard shield is down. We've taken a lot of damage there. As you see in the bottom left there, that's our shield facings there. So basically, you're going to want to rotate around to have your different shields absorb more damage as one of them goes down. Uh, the ticked bars there on the outside, that is the actual... Grab that crate there. Uh, so the ticked bars on the outside, that's your actual shield. The solid bar on the inside on the bottom left there, that is your armor plating. Once that is down, you'll start taking damage on the actual ship itself. And that, of course, will um, cause systems to malfunction. You can have different turret controls damaged, you'll have engines damaged, uh, various different other functions and whatnot. So, of course, that will add up and really just ruin your day. And you will have to repair in-station, and on the larger ships it adds up. Uh, for example, on my primary playthrough, I'm on a destroyer-class ship right now, and uh, it usually adds up to about... a. Uh, 30 or 40,000 each time I have to repair one of the sides. And of course, some of the larger ships, it gets up to several hundred thousand. So we need to go to the shipyard and we need to repair. We need to spend 127 credits to repair all this damage we had here. And basically, this just means that these uh, different features were reduced. And of course, we have to repair to get them back up to snuff. Repairs complete. And then we have our different holes here. There's, I believe, 21 different ships total. Each faction has their own special ships that you can only get to the factions. You can become either a pirate, a mercenary, or join the Merchant's Guild. Uh, on my primary playthrough, I have joined both the Merchant's Guild and the uh, Mercenary's Guild, which most of you will probably end up doing. And they all have their own, basically, level system that you go through with the ranks with them. And that will, of course, uh, determine what you can get from them. Now, looking here on the ship selection, it tells you flat out our red is a decrease and green is increase, and white is, of course, the neutral or same. So this tells us this one has six guns for the broadside. So you can see them all right here. And it has, let's see, four turrets. You can actually physically see the turrets. There's two up here. There should be two on the bottom. Uh, second reports are only two, and then of course component banks are three, and then hold size 20, and so on. And of course, uh, that gives you a comparison based on the ship you have. Now, it will automatically trade in the value of your current ship towards the next one, so these prices will decrease as you upgrade holes to different ones. And of course, uh, basically you'll just progress through the game that way. You don't actually have to upgrade your ship. You can complete the entire game with just the Hammerhead class, the Rasputin. As most of your stats and whatnot actually come from the equipment you add on, such as the turrets, shields, armor, and engines. So that is an interesting way to play it if you don't want to go through and end up uh, basically upgrading ships. Of course, but there's no real reason not to upgrade ships, because obviously the more guns and different options you have, the better you can equip them. Now, we're going to take a look here at the commodities market while we're here. Uh, this tells us what we have in hold. This is what they have in supply. Red means it's below the system average, as in basically they have a negative effect on the system that it is severely below it. And, of course, uh, green means it's significantly above it. Now... 
We also have items that are illegal, so if the name is marked in red, that item is illegal. Even if they will purchase it at that station, it'll still be marked in red, so you'll know. If you get stopped by the uh, system militia, they will tell you to turn it over, or of course, you'll have to try to bribe them, or fight your way out. And of course, um, there are hold types you can upgrade to that will mask items, so you can actually hide those items and not get detected. And of course they have a decrease in actual amount of items they can carry as a result. So you have a trade-off there, if you're going to smuggle illegal goods you need to either have a really fast or armored ship or to go with a um, hidden cargo. It really depends on how you want to play. There's a variety of ways to do each one. So this tells us here we have one here, and it's very simple, hit A to sell, and then of course before you click off of it, whether you sell or buy, you can always hit control to revert it, and that'll cancel it out. Of course we don't need any of this, so we'll just go ahead and sell it as is, it was free. And um, this tells us the quantity they have in supply, uh, this is the sell price obviously, that's how much we get, and of course that's how much we pay for purchasing one. Uh, the different effects on the systems, we'll go ahead and close out of that. Actually, we need to exit the system to pull up the map to show you. So, different effects on the uh, stations. Like this has a convoy inbound, and there's the actual convoy. Which you can trade by going up to the convoy and hailing them in space. But the different effects on the system have different, well, market effects. Basically, a mining rush means that all of the different ores at that station are going to be much cheaper. So when there's a mining rush, you'll probably want to go buy your more expensive ores and then take it over to another system or station where they're actually in need of those ores at a higher value. Like here's an arms race, so if we took munitions over to this station here, we could make a huge markup on that. Now, of course, that does vary depending on the items you're carrying and whatnot and how much the markup is. Like, for example, I've seen pure water, which generally retails at 18k-ish, go for up to 50k in some different stations when certain effects are in line. And of course when you buy it for cheap, obviously you're going to make even more of a profit that way. So we'll go ahead and go back into the station. Engine set at maximum. Now if we just fly into it, it will auto-dock us. But you can still end up hitting it before it auto-docks you. Stalking. It really just depends on your speed there. And it will damage you. So keep that in mind. Alright, so we'll go ahead and skip through this one. Uh, you get different options on all these scripted events. Basically, this one gave us a deflector, which will go into the equipment bay here. And go to defense, and select deflector. Alright, so we've got the uh, Mark One deflector equipped. This is something we didn't have previously, but basically what this will do is we'll hold in our spacebar in combat. It activates the deflector. It takes 225 points of damage. It'll last for 20 seconds or until that damage is exceeded. Basically, it gets whittled down. It's an extra shield, more or less. And 15 seconds to recharge. Now, there's different types of deflectors, too. There's those that actually give a bonus to ramming damage, which are pretty neat. And then there's... Um, one that I have on my primary playthrough, which reflects a portion of small energy weapon fires. Not like lasers, but actual like pulse shots and whatnot. Uh, more, some of the more common fire. Now here we have the shields, of course, which obviously as we've gone over are just your shields, and we want to probably consider upgrading how much credits. Yeah, we've got 10k. We'll go ahead and upgrade our shield here real quick. And since we are just doing an upgrade, it's asking us if we want to sell our old primary shields. So we'll say no just to show you this here. You'll see the bracket and the number there that indicates, of course, you already own this, and it's in your hold, and how many you have. So we click on that. We have an option to sell for here. So we'll go ahead and sell that. Otherwise, it takes up one cargo space within the ship's hold itself. And hull plating is, of course, the armor plating as well. So we'll skip off of that, and we'll go back and get our secondary weapon. Now, this is something I highly recommend, is to go ahead and use flak as your secondary, because you're going to run into a lot of missiles out there, and flak is just really great at taking care of those. And you'll upgrade that later on. Other options are dumb fire missiles and, of course, heat-seeking missiles. And there's mines and EMP flak, which is kind of like flak, except for it's solely designed for dropping fighter craft out of operation and reducing their shields for a short duration. I've played with it. It's pretty nice for when you're fighting 
well, fighters, but in this situation, you're going to want to make sure you have dedicated turrets to flak turrets, which do the same thing as the secondary flak, because you're going to run into missiles in pretty much every fight you run into. So, I guess you could say secondary flak is kind of OP in that regards because it takes out a lot of the damage you're going to end up running into. But of course, you can always go with the turret version as well. And that would just do just as fine. Now we have all these different types of turrets here. We'll take a quick look. Uh, you've got missile turrets that do different items or different particular effects. Shield busters, leech turrets, and particle lasers, mining lasers, of course, are required to actually mine. Now you can just bust open asteroids with regular weapons and you'll sometimes get ore drops that way. But you really need to use mining lasers if you're going to mine. So you'll end up switching your loadouts if you're switching between mining and doing missions to fight. Now I personally like the pulse turrets because they have a good long range, decent damage, and they do good damage on both hull and shield. As you'll see here with the uh, default one, the scatter turret, shield penetration is only 75%. So it's already got a 25% damage reduction against shields. And of course other turret types, we'll go down to swarm turret, and that's got an increase, so it's 133% of the normal damage to shields, but then a 25% decrease towards hull penetration. So you can do this with your ships where you mix and match your turrets. So for example, you could do a swarm turret on one, or even a shield buster, which has the best for it, of course. And then you could do, let's say, I think a particle laser. No, particle laser is not what we're yeah. Okay, they don't have all the turret types here because you don't have all the same weapons in every station. Some particular items you're going to find at other locations, but say for example you could do the shield buster and then uh, the particle laser here, which despite only having 100% hold penetration, actually has a really good damage for it, and it's basically a laser weapon that will just chew through hull. I actually have a similar weapon as my primary broadside on my main playthrough, and it's very good. Now, looking at the swarm turret here, one of the things you want to consider is the, well, type of weapon it is. Energy weapons, there's no upkeep for them, they just get used, and they just keep going and going and going, and that's pretty good. That's another advantage for the pollster that I've used primarily. But, for the ordnance weapons, for the ordnance weapons here, what we have is basically there's a limited ammunition for them, and you have to purchase more each time you dock at the station. So you're going to end up spending more, but you can do a lot more because this will have a higher hit and better stats in general. And of course, look at the range on that. It's 8,400 meters compared to the uh, pulse turret, which is only 32. So the range is just massive on that. You can just sit back and just pelt them at a distance. So there's um, all these different things to consider for it. Uh, again, I do strongly recommend the pulse turret, which we can't get quite yet because we only did the first mission. Now the broadsides are very much the same as the turrets. Uh, you have your different variations as well, and they do different effects, of course. Uh, your secondary is where you'll find your variations for missiles as we went over, and again with the missiles as we just went over turrets, you'll use that to purchase ordnance here and that'll get expended as you use it. So uh, for this you just want to stick with your pulse until you can get up to something like a... Uh, well, you could actually use tachyon would actually be pretty decent. But basically uh, in the other stations and other systems you'll find there's different vari variation of weapons that you want to use that are a lot more effective at different things. So you'll want to just play with that. Uh, the pulse ones are pretty good for now. Um, what we have in the components is your engines, your booster, warp drive, and all of this here. So, tractor beam, we will actually get in a storyline mission, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, jump drive, we'll have to purchase that later on, but that won't be a problem by that point. Uh, your subsystems, these are more or less geared primarily towards your late to mid game, or sorry, your, yeah, late to mid game. Uh, for example, if you went with a primarily turret-heavy build, say you went with one of the holes that has 20 turret options on it, you're going to want to get like turret acceleration, heat management, turret extender, turret optimizer, and just use that to really max it out. Uh, there's hacking in the game, of course, your missile upgrades, and then of course you have your broadsides and everything else on here. And if you've got a nice 
selection of upgrades here, and of course your subsystem count increases or decreases based on the hole you've selected. Uh, your warp drive is, well, just your warp drive. Basically, it's how fast you move through warp and how quick it is for you to charge up to warp away. You can get down to one second, I think, is the fastest I've seen on it, so it pretty much is almost instant. Your booster is very important. Uh, we have our basic boosters, which just give us that particular 90 ms acceleration. It's uh, fairly good, fairly decent long burning. Your no grab ones are a bit longer burning, so you can burn your booster for a while longer, but you have a slower acceleration overall. Now, the one I like to use particularly is the Slamjet Booster because it will just get you out of there. It is just so much faster, and I strongly recommend it for pretty much any situation because any time that you are still learning it, the, the combat, and you're evolving your combat style, you're going to have that Slamjet to be able to get out of there so that you can avoid getting killed. Now your engines are obviously fairly straightforward. We'll actually go ahead and upgrade this here. So we just upgrade our engine speed. That's our base cruising speed. And of course, larger ships, as you will, as you saw rather in the ship selection, have different base speeds, and this just increases it further. So obviously, you want to upgrade your engine as you go through the game as well. So let's go ahead and take another look here at some of the combat with our new upgrades. Engines at maximum. You can see. Our deflector in the bottom left of the shields. We hit space, that activates. We cannot shoot at all. While we have this active, even our auto fire is going to disable. And once we let off of it, it'll start to recharge. Now, once it's completely depleted, it's going to have a downtime before it starts to recharge, which is where that rating came in as like 14 seconds and whatnot. Right, so we'll get over here to this operation. Now, when you're in warp, you can actually find other ships in warp as well. When you get close, they tend to make you and them both drop out of warp. You can hail them in warp. You can even do trades with convoy ships in warp. Or you can end up ramming them on occasion as well. Alright, so we are supposed to destroy these crates. Now, we can take a look at our scanner here. Target locked. We'll lock our target on here. Hold down our scan. Tells us what's in there, who owns it, posture, bounty, and all that. So we'll go ahead and switch back over here. And since we're this close, we don't actually really need to aim. We'll just rapidly hit our fire button for the broadside. And you see how it kind of scatters out. Engines at maximum. Get close to this one as well. Full stop. And we'll just fire here again. Enemy craft inbound. And you can see the difference Resident between when we fire and how it just spreads out like that compared to when we hold it down and it just gets really concentrated. And of course it makes tracking so much easier as well. Alright, so we're going to hold down our secondary button, which is our shift key. And you'll see our flares continuously firing out. And we're not firing any missiles in this particular mission yet, but we'll end up seeing a lot of missiles as we progress through the game and this will basically counter them. Now you can see it only hits out certain areas and as you upgrade you'll have more of them, or rather they'll work more effectively. So you have to account for the facing of your ship as well. So basically you just want to adjust the way you're facing. If we have missiles coming off say that wreck right there, we want to turn so that our flares will shoot out behind us, and that way those missiles will get hit. And we'll go after this guy here. Accelerate to sublight. Sublight boosters depleted. Switch to our turret. Yeah, turret. Now here's a good tactic. I like to go into the turret primarily. Cut through his shields. You can see on the icons there his shield is going down. Now we're on his hull. Or his armor rather. And now we can just fire into him. We'll get closer here. You see he only has one weapon shooting at us because he's going to broadside about. Obviously facing is going to matter in the game. And for some ships, the turrets are not asymmetrical. They can't fire in every direction. Or not all of them can fire in the same direction. So what you want to do is find the blind spot for that particular ship type. And then just get right in it. Of course, we'll be seeing that Mission later on. Complete. So we Broad finish size. that. Collision warning. Now we'll just jet past all this wreckage. Obviously, you can't crash into the wreckage and it will damage you. 
crash into something doesn't just kill you flat out, it just damages you, and of course if you continue to crash, you'll continue to take damage until it actually does destroy you. Uh, another neat thing is every celestial body, the stars, the moons, planets, you can fly into them, and of course you will die, but you can fly into them, there's no invisible wall saying that, hey, you can't go there. It's, uh, it's a nice little design choice, basically it adds a bit more character to it, more or less. I did one the other day where I just decided to fly an Icarus into the sun just for the uh, lulls of it, of course. And that worked out quite well. Alright, so that pretty much covers a lot of the basics here and getting started and the idea of how the game works. I hope that's helpful and inspirational in some way for you guys. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.